Texas football today here at AT&T Stadium in Arlington for the UIL Texas High School Football State Championship Games. This is your Friday preview of the slate here at AT&T. My name is Greg Tepper of Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com. And that is the high school football insider of Dave Campbell's Texas Football. It is Mr. Matt Step. Follow him on Twitter at Matt underscore Step Papa 817. All right, Step. We're at Friday now. It's Friday Night Lights. It's what we expect. Um, and we're starting to get into a bit of the big boys. Oh, yeah. 4A games going down plus the 5A Division One game. Uh, this is going to be three games that I think have a, a – they all have a different personality to them. No doubt. No doubt. I, I think for me, Friday is going to be the, my favorite day mm -hmm. because you get that kind of – the 4As especially, the, the, the small town feel, mm -hmm. but still really great talent is going to be on the field, uh, especially in the Division One game, oh, yeah. uh, which we're going to talk – which we're about to talk about. But I think overall it's my favorite day. The crowds are going to start getting bigger, and uh, the, the action really is going to heat up. So let's get to it. Let's start with the 11 a.m. kick, 4A Division One state championship game. It's the defending champs, the Carthage Bulldogs, drawing the Cannondale Wildcats making their first appearance at the state championship game. I broke it down earlier at TexasFootball.com. Here is my 4A Division One breakdown on Texas football today. Two of the best rushing attacks in Texas high school football square off for the 4A Division I state championship. These are the picks. Welcome into the picks in partnership with All Star Inflatables, your guide to the Texas high school football state championship games. My name is Greg Tepper of Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We're previewing the 4A Division I state title game. 11 a.m. Friday at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. It's the Class 4A Division I state championship game between the Kennedale Wildcats and the Carthage Bulldogs. What are the keys to this matchup? Well, key number one, standard downs. Let me explain. There's two types of downs when you're talking about advanced analytics in football. There's standard downs. That's first and 10, second and five, third and three. And then there's passing downs, downs that you're more likely to throw the ball. Downs like second and 11 or third and eight. This game comes down to what happens on the normal standard downs, the first and tens and the second and fives, because these two teams do have a tendency to run the ball very well. For Kennedale, it's that wing tee attack with Jaden Knowles and DJ Curvin. They have been outstanding and were excellent in their semifinal win over Stephenville. And for Carthage, you know who it is. It's Keontae Ingram, one of the best prospects and running backs in the state of Texas. Who can get their opponent behind the chains and put them into passing downs by stopping them on standard downs. Key number two, Kennedale's blitzes. So you're going to see a lot of various, maybe exotic packages from this Kennedale defense. They like to mix it up and try to confuse their opponent. And one of the things that they like to do is bring pressure up the gut with their linebacker, Jalen Myers. And they had great success in their win over Stephenville. Now, part of that is that you're sending extra pressure at the quarterback or the running back on a run blitz. And that's going to leave some single coverages on the outside. Kennedale has generally been more athletic than their opponents so they're able to slow that down. That may not be the case with Carthage. So when Kennedale blitzes, can they get home or will Carthage make them pay? And key number three, Carthage's extra gear. Around the Dave Campbell's Texas football offices, when we've talked about Carthage, one of the reasons we say that we really like this team is because they seem to have that other gear that other teams don't have. The fifth gear where suddenly the game gets tight and they just zoom away from their opponent. They've done it a lot this year with their quarterback gunner caps and their running back Keontae Ingram. Not to mention an outstanding defense that comes up with big plays at timely moments. Can Carthage get that extra gear in a state championship game or will Kennedale stop them from getting there? Who am I picking? I'm going with Carthage. I think their defense is actually pretty well suited to slow down the wing tee attack for Kennedale, despite the fact that Kennedale has outrageous speed all over the field. Beyond that, I just think that their running game with Keontae Ingram has been fantastic all year long, and I think there's a real argument that Carthage is the best pound-for-pound -pound team in the state of Texas. If Kennedale is going to win this game, I think they need this to be a low-scoring slugfest, keep this game in the 20s. I'm not sure that's going to happen. I think Carthage wins the 4A Division I state championship. There it is, my breakdown of the 4A Division I state championship game between Carthage and Kennedale. And, Step, the, the number one thing to know is that these are two of the best rushing attacks in the state. Going to go at it. This game is going to be over in about 45 minutes. It might. I mean, you got, you know, and why not, right? When you've got Kennedale with their wing tee, two-headed monster of a DJ Curved and Jaden Knowles and Carthage with uh, Keontae Ingram, the state's 
in my opinion, the state's best running back. Mm -hmm. uh, you commit, committed to the University of Texas. Uh, why wouldn't you let your bell cows carry the mail and, uh, and get the job done? Yeah, let's start with Cannondale making their first state championship game appearance. Uh, what Richard Baird has, has done is really fantastic there uh, at Cannondale. And they're running that old-school offense, wing tee. And, you know, when you think of the wing tee, I think you, you think, oh, it's multiple threats. They've all, probably all got about uh, 1,000 yards, about three guys. Instead, they've got two 2,000-yard two bats. Yeah. And Jaden Knowles and DJ Curvin, and these guys are burners, and they can make you pay. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we thought Stephenville had a chance to kind of contain them. No way. No. Uh, Curvin ran for th over 300 yards in that win and five touchdowns. And Knowles, oh, only had 170 yards and two uh -huh. touchdowns. You know, he's Slacking Knowles off. is kind of the guy who uh, will hit you on the trap play mm -hmm. uh, when, when you're when you're keying on Curvin to the to the edge on the buck sweep. Uh, Knowles is going to hit you on the trap and, and really make you pay. So Carthage is going to have to play disciplined defense. They're going to have to stay in their lanes and they're going to win some one on one battles up front in order to get into the backfield and really throw off that pin trap. Throw throw off that offense. Yeah, and one of the things that's very interesting is that because it is the wing. Tee. You know, this is a, a, a team in Carthage. I believe they've seen the wing tee this year before, but it might be a while. You're going to have to dust off that old playbook. This yeah. is something you have a week to prepare for an offense. If you're playing a spread offense, I mean, in a lot of respects, you're just kind of dealing with the wrinkles. Here, a lot of the principles are the same. Yeah, here you're dealing with an entirely new new offense you have to defend, and, and, and what Kennedale does so well is that they it's very hard to simulate the wing tee in practice, and that might be a big advantage for the Wildcats. Absolutely. Another thing to keep an eye on is Carthage it, defensively, because when you're playing spread football teams, you're in a different personnel grouping, so the question for Carthage is going to be, are they going to go away from the personnel groupings that have gotten them here in order to combat the wing T offense, or are they going to try to make Kennedale adjust to what they do defensively? Yeah, and by the way, Kennedale's defense, fantastic as well. One of the best uh, in 4A Division One. You know, on the other side, here's Carthage. They're the defending state champs. They are a team that is looking for their sixth state championship, in I believe. Ten years. Which is unbelievable. What Scott Surratt has built out there in East Texas is outrageous. Uh, and they've got superstars, and it starts – with Keontae Ingram, and I know that if you're a prospect nerd, you've heard about this kid. If you're a high school nerd, you've heard about this kid. If you're just an average fan, I mean, you're in for a treat. This kid's the complete deal. Yeah, what I really love about Ingram, obviously, he's a great running back. He can line up deep in the eye formation and carry the ball, run between the tackles. But what I love about him, Carthage uses him in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. He's the best receiving running back prospect that I've seen uh, probably since Herschel Sims from Abilene High mm -hmm. a few years ago. He can line up in the slot, run routes like a receiver, and catch the football. I think in the state championship game last year against Abilene Wiley, he hurt them on a wheel route out of the backfield. Uh, I expect uh, Carthage to use him in multiple ways again. The real key is going to be creating matchup problems with Ingram and trying to get him in space against someone who can't keep up. They're also going to need a great game from their quarterback, Gunnar Caps, who has been a little bit uneven sometimes, but if he has a big game, that's a huge advantage uh, for Carthage. But lost in all the offensive weapons they have is a very good, sound, hard-hitting defense led by Michael Gates. This is a very good Carthage defense. They force turnovers, and that's yeah. really big. You know, the time I saw Carthage in person against Gilmer, uh, they just went on a turnover spree in the fourth quarter and really turned that game on its head. Uh, if Carthage can get a couple of takeaways, it's going to be huge. Uh, they've got a great defensive line, uh, Good depth, good speed up front, and their linebackers really make plays. Um, they're really ball hawking, and I think of Kennedale, you know, they're, they, they go after the football. Mm -hmm. So even though Kennedale probably won't put the ball in the air very much, Carthage is still going to be going after that football, trying to get strips and trying to make big plays. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. This is a fantastic matchup of two really balanced uh, teams uh, that are going to be here. To me, the biggest question goes back to that scheme advantage that Kennedale might have. Can If Carthage figures out how to stop the wing tee, uh, that's probably the ball game. I mean, that's, no that's basically it. But if Kennedale can, can break a couple of big plays with that wing tee and kind of get them on their heels, then suddenly it's really game on. Yeah, and, you know, you, you get that frustration from mm -hmm. Carthage, you know, where if, if they can't stop that offense, they're going to be kind of going to the sidelines going, what are we doing wrong? How do we fix this? How do we stop it? That can kind of snowball at times. I think it snowballed on Stephenville a little bit last week. It could potentially snowball on Carthage a little bit. I tend to think it won't. Carthage has been here. They've been in ad adverse situations the last couple of years and gotten it done. Their coaching staff is really experienced, um, and, and I think they'll find a way in this one. So then there you go. It's a 4A Division One state championship game, 11 a.m. on Friday between Carthage and Cannondale. I take it then you're taking Carthage? Taking the Bulldogs. All right, I'm going to stick with Carthage as well. They've been my pick since the beginning of the playoffs. I think they're the most balanced team. And the other thing is that they have that extra gear that you saw it against Gilmer. That's a perfect example of a game where you saw it. That, you know, this game was this was a close game, kind of nip and tuck back and forth, and then Carthage hit the Jets. Yes. And they ran away from a really good Gilmer team. And they've done that to pretty much everyone this year, including Waco La Vega in the semifinals. Yeah. They just did it in the first quarter against yeah. La Vega. <laughs> so, for me, it's up to, it's up to Kennedale to kind of hold back the wave because Carthage comes at you in waves. And so, I'm going to stick with Carthage as well. That's just getting start Friday started, though, because then 3 o'clock, we get the 4A Division Two State Championship game between two of the best defense 
defenses you're going to see in the state championship games. It's Pleasant Grove out of Texarkana making their state championship debut, going up against uh, an old salty veteran oh, in the state yeah. championship games, the two-time defending champs, the winners of 40 straight. It's West Orange, Stark. The Mustangs are back in the title game. I broke this game down earlier on texasfootball.com. Here's my analysis of the 4A Division II state championship game here on Texas Football Today. Defense, defense, and more defense in the 4A Division II state championship game. These are the picks. Welcome into the picks in partnership with All-Star Inflatables, your guide to Texas high school football state championship games. My name is Greg Tepper of Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we're previewing the 4A Division II state title game. 3 o'clock Friday afternoon at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. It's the Class 4A Division II State Championship game between the Pleasant Grove Hawks and the West Orange Stark Mustangs. What are the keys to this matchup? Well, key number 1, 24. I think that's the magic number. After giving it a little bit of thought and looking at the results and looking at the numbers, I think 24 points wins this game. Now, part of the reason is that these two defenses have been outrageous. Two of the very best in Class 4A all year long. The chain gang defense for West Orange Stark needs no introduction at this point. They have been outstanding all year long. And for Pleasant Grove, maybe you haven't paid a ton of attention to them, but they are physical and they will make you pay. So, who can find those 24 points? Is it Chauncey Martin, the running back for Pleasant Grove? Is it Shaka Watson, the quarterback for West Orange Stark? Who can get to 24? I think that's what wins this ball game. Key number two, Pleasant Grove in the trenches. So West Orange Stark is the two-time defending champ, so they have the champion's advantage that you have to beat them. And in a lot of respects, how they beat you is by being dominant on the offensive and defensive lines. Well, here's Pleasant Grove, a team that has met every challenge on the offensive and defensive lines. Their big hog mollies up front have been outstanding all year long. This is going to be a big test for West Orange Stark, but maybe the biggest test of the year for Pleasant Grove. So who wins in the trenches? And more importantly, can Pleasant Grove just play it to a draw? That might be enough to win it. And key number three, big stage experience. What Josh Gibson has done at Pleasant Grove might be the best coaching job in the state of Texas, guiding the Hawks to their first state championship game. Texarkana is fired up for them, and they should be, and they've got a great chance to make some more history on Friday afternoon. For West Orange Stark, though, this is kind of old hat, at least as much old hat as playing in the title game can be. This is their fourth consecutive trip to the biggest stage of them all. So think about it. The seniors at West Orange Stark have never known a year in high school where their team didn't play for a state championship. The experience on the big stage, that factor is a huge advantage for West Orange Stark. Does it show up or is this just another game? Who am I picking? I'm going with West Orange Stark. The two-time defending champs have the champion's advantage there, and you don't pick against the streak. I learned that the hard way last week. I think the chain gang defense has been fantastic, and if this offense has truly woken up, and maybe they get a couple special teams play from their outstanding defensive back, Jaron Morris, I think that the Mustangs have a great shot at three-peating. For Pleasant Grove, the key in this one is clock control. They need to grind out long drawn out drives to take the ball away from West Orange Stark. I'm not sure that's going to happen. I think pedigree plays a big part in this one. I think West Orange Stark wins the 4A Division II State Championship. There it is, my breakdown of the 4A Division II State Championship game. The West Orange Stark Mustangs will take on the Pleasant Grove Hawks at 3 o'clock here at at t Stadium in Arlington. And let's start with those Hawks. Let's start with Pleasant Grove making their first state championship appearance. And the other thing... What's so amazing about what Josh Gibson has done there at Pleasant Grove, this program was arguably the third biggest program in its own city. Yeah. I mean, this was, I mean, with all due respect to the teams of the past, it was kind of just bobbing along, nothing really special. Every once in a while, they kind of pop up and have a year. They go to the area round of the yeah. playoffs, but never, nothing like this. Nothing like this. No. What, what Josh Gibson has built there at Pleasant Grove is so impressive. It's really, really incredible. You look at the run they've had the last uh, few weeks, uh, beating Salina, Melissa, and Graham three in a row and convincingly in all yeah. three games. Just real, just dominant wins over you know a Salina team that is one of the most historical programs in the state, um, a surging Melissa program, and then uh, Graham who was undefeated and averaging nearly 50 points a game. Yeah, I mean, it's they're on a run, and they do it in a bit of an unconventional fashion. Yeah. They do it. They are super physical. 
they run up to the ball and they they run they run up to the ball, they snap it and they run and they play great defense. It's very old school football, but it works in a big way. Yeah, you know, obviously the headliner is going to be uh, on defense, a linebacker Xavier Benson who you will see play some tight end as well. And when they throw the ball, they will throw the ball his way, but this is a real team effort on the defensive side of the ball. A couple of young defensive linemen, a couple of freshmen uh, making big impacts on them along the defensive line. And, and you know, one thing that me and Max uh, saw when we watched them play last week is when they run to the football, when they when they arrive at the ball carrier, they arrive with bad intentions. They yeah. will strike you. Yeah. And I think that's just and, an M.O. for them. And they set the tone last week against Graham. Tucker Horn had thrown for a lot of yards. In the second play of the game, he dropped back the pass, and they hit him really hard. And for the rest of the game, he was kind of – he kind of heard those footsteps a little yeah. bit and it threw the timing of the Graham offense off. Offensively, Pleasant Grove's going to keep the ball on the ground a lot. It's T.J. Cole, their running back. Chauncey Martin, their other running back. This team wants to grind it out on the ground. And, and that is another reason why we figure this game is going to be very low scoring because, look, Going up against West Orange Stark. And, and and any conversation about 4A Division II begins and ends with the Mustangs. The, they're back in their fourth consecutive state championship game. The winners of the last two titles. Longest winning streak in the state. 40 consecutive games. And, and, you know, last week... I picked against them. I thought As Win- did I. Yeah. I thought Wimberley was going to knock them off. Because Shame that, on us. Because that offense was humming so much. But... It all starts as it always have with always has rather with Coach Cornell Thompson. It's that chain gang defense, and they are outstanding. And and, and traditionally, they eat these T offenses for lunch: mm-hmm. slot T, wing T. They they know it. They they know it like the back of their hand, and they shut it down. Mm-hmm. Um, it really it's gonna be interesting to see because this is strength on strength here, good on good. Can that Texarkana Pleasant Grove offense, which does things a little differently than Kendall, Pleasant Grove really relies on that jet and fly sweep mm-hmm. out of the wing tee to get to get to the edge and make plays. Getting the edge against that speedy West Orange start defense is going to be a real challenge. It is. They fly to the football. The guy to know here is Jaron Morris, uh, a cornerback who's also a punt return. He had a, a dazzling punt return for a touchdown. That really Watch bro- it on YouTube. It's great. That really broke the back of Wimberley in their semifinal win last week. This kid is a stud. Uh, and then, look, on the offense, you know, the, the whole West Orange Shark team is based around we're going to play defense, we're going to get our offense where we can get it. And they, they lose a guy like Jack Dallas, their quarterback, Vanilla Thunder, and, and then they bring in Shaka Watson – and this kid has really matured and really started to grow up. They want to keep the ball on the ground as well. Yeah, Watson is a run first quarterback. He, he's he's really dynamic when he gets out in the open field, as evidence in his ninety yard ninety nine yard touchdown run last week against Wimberley. Uh, he's got some good weapons around him in the running game. But, but you know, West Orange Stark uh, predicates himself on the ground game, and that's going up against again strength on strength. That Texas Canada Pleasant Grove run defense is really really sound and really really physical. What what a matchup it's going to be. If you're looking for a shootout, you're probably at the wrong game. I'll tell yeah. you that much. This is going to be a low scoring. Fit- Physical game. These two teams are going to hit each other, and it's the pads are going to be popping here at AT and T Stadium, three o'clock. Uh, you know, one thing I do want to mention before we get to our predictions. You mentioned that Pleasant Grove running that kind of T attack down there in that in that Golden Triangle area. That's where you see a lot of them. Yep. West Orange Stark is used to seeing teams like this. Yes. They're used to seeing offenses like this. So whereas Pleasant Grove may have snuck up on some other teams, Graham, there's a fair chance they hadn't seen a T attack, right? Yep. West Orange Sharks seen it, and that might be. Been a, there, done that. That might be a strategic advantage for the Mustangs. I think it's be a huge advantage. Coach Cornell Thompson, he's been around for a while as well. He knows how to coach up against these offenses. It's the 4A Division Two State Championship game. It's Pleasant Grove taking on West Orange Shark in a battle of unbeaten's here, three o'clock at AT and T Stadium on Friday. And so, step. Uh, we we both said we both kind of spoiled our prediction a bit by saying it's low scoring. Who is able to break through the most? I'm going to go with West Orange Stark in, in a close, low-scoring game. Uh, I think the same thing. I think in a lot of respects you don't pick against the streak. And another thing is remember, all these kids, almost all these kids for West Orange Stark, they've been here before. What, what is it, the, 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 the Ric Flair? The Ric Flair it? principle. Yeah, that to Rick be Flair the man, pr- woo! you got to beat the man. And that is our take on the 4A Division II state championship game going down 3 o'clock on Friday here at AT&T Stadium. We're Texas football today. This is your Friday preview of the UIL Texas High Football State Championship games. It's Matt Steff. I'm Greg Tepper, and we'll close it all out. With our first 5A game, oh yeah, Friday night, 7 o'clock, back to defend their title are the Highland Park Scots, and they will draw a team looking for their first state championship. The Manville Mavericks are coming to town. Okay. It is going to be a fantastic game for the 5A Division I state championship game. I broke it down earlier on TexasFootball.com. Here's my analysis of the 5A Division I state championship game here on Texas Football Today. It's Dallas versus Houston for the 5A Division I State Championship. These are the picks. (laughs) 
Welcome into the picks in partnership with All Star Inflatables, your guide to Texas high school football state championship games. My name is Greg Tepper of Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We're previewing the 5A Division I state title game. 7 o'clock Friday night at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. It's the Class 5A Division I State Championship between the Highland Park Scots and the Manville Mavericks. What are the keys to this matchup? Well, key number one, third down. And this is why Highland Park is here. In their state semifinal win over Denton Ryan, they went 11 for 14 on third down. That is is ridiculous. Anytime they needed a big play offensively, they got it from their running back Paxton Alexander or their outstanding wide receiver Cade Sawstad. And so this is really the big question here. Can the Manville defense, led by linebacker Brian Jones, get the Scots off the field when they have a chance, or will Highland Park continue to feast on third down? Key number two, Manville's speed versus Highland Park's metal. This Manville team is kind of a freak show. They have speed all over the field, whether it's wide receiver Cam Scott, whether it's do-it-all athlete Jalen Preston, whether it's their running back Daneric Prince, they have playmakers all over the field and speed that quite frankly, Highland Park probably hasn't seen before. That said, Highland Park's defense is not predicated on having the best athletes, but rather being in a schematic advantage by having your guys in the right place. And so it's gonna be up to guys like Noble Nash and Zach Foltz to be in position and follow the game Game plan in order to slow down this Manville attack. Now, nobody's been able to do that against Manville this year. It's a big reason why they're in this state championship game. Can Highland Park be the team to finally slow down the Mavericks? And key number three, the quarterback battle. This is the high profile aspect of this game. All eyes are going to be on these two signal callers. For Highland Park, it's John Stephen Jones, who has been exceptional and is, at this point, we need to stop talking about who his grandfather is because he's just a lot more notable by himself as a high school football player than he is as somebody's progeny. He's been outstanding and he's a big reason why Highland Park is playing for another state championship. On the other side, you've got Cason Martin, the coach's kid for Manville. He has been exceptional pushing all the right buttons for this Mavericks attack. So, on the biggest stage of them all, who shines brightest in the quarterback battle? Who am I picking? I'm going with Manville. They were my pick before the playoffs, and I'm not hopping off the bandwagon quite yet. I think the number of weapons that they have can just be so overwhelming between Case and Martin, their running backs, their wide receivers, the special teams play. But I think what really sets them apart and what goes underrated is their defense. Brian Johnson has been exceptional for this Mavericks defense. Now, look, Highland Park was an underdog last week against Denton Ryan. They were an underdog in the title game last year against Temple. They were an underdog in their state semifinal last year against Denton Ryan. They are used to me picking against them, basically. So take what I say with a grain of salt. That said, I think the Mavericks are too much. I think Manville brings home the 5A Division I State Championship. There it is, my breakdown of the 5A Division I State Championship games going down 7 o'clock here at AT&T Stadium on Friday afternoon, or Friday evening, rather, between the Highland Park Scots and the Manville Mavericks. So let's start with the defending state champs. Highland Park, we thought they were going to lose last week. Then again, we thought they were going to lose in the semifinals last year. We also thought they were going to lose in the, in the state championship. We've been very wrong about Highland Park. We're very good at being wrong about Highland Park and... <sighs> I mean, where, where do you start with it? I think probably you start with the coach. You start with Randy Allen and just how sound they are. There's 1,400 Texas high school football teams, a little more than 1,400. About 1,000 of them will beat themselves on a relatively frequent basis. Yes. Highland Park basically never does, and that's yeah. where it starts. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, Randy Allen's been through the wars before. He's been a highly su successful head coach, and it's a perfect fit at Highland Park with, with those kids in, in his system. Uh, really meticulous, very detail-oriented. He's always got a wrinkle or two up his sleeve when they play against teams who they feel like are probably going to be superior athletically to them, which is going to be the case with Manville and some of the talent they throw out there. Yeah, because it's so funny. This, this team has kind of reinvented itself on the fly. If you are looking back at that 2016 state championship win over Temple, which was a 16-7 to defensive slugfest, um, this team is different. This team scores a lot. This yes. is a very high-powered offense led by quarterback John Stephen Jones, uh, and, and he has been fabulous. He's been a guy who has really taken that next step as a quarterback. You know, a lot of people watching the game on TV might get a little annoyed. Oh, you know, keep talking about John Stephen Jones. He's Jerry Jones' grandson, that kind of thing. Make no mistake about it. 
his merits as a football player stand on their own. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, what he did last week against Denton Ryan, 11 of 14 on third down conversions, and a lot of that was John Stephen Jones uh, eluding, eluding a guy in the pocket, breaking a tackle, breaking contain. And if you if, if you want to talk about a guy who can really improvise and ad-lib, he's one of the best in the state. And I think it's going to be real key for Manville to keep him contained in the pocket because when he breaks contain, uh, receivers are running wide open. Yeah, because I, I think it's really important because I think when people say break contain, they think that he's going to break off some ADR touchdown run. That's probably not the case. No. He's, not a, he's not a burner. He's not a guy, but he's very elusive. He's very elusive. He can't He's very hard to bring down, and so that's going to be a big key for the Manville defense. And he finds guys like Kate Sostad. He find, he maybe checks it down to their great running back, uh, Paxton Alexander, or any number of guys that yeah. they have. So for me, that's the offensive side. The defense, look, we're going to go from the 4A Division II game with West Orange Park and Pleasant Grove, who had just locked down physical defenses. This Highland Park defense, the statistics aren't pretty. No. But they, they make plays at the right time. A little bit of bend, bend, bend but don't break philosophy. They'll give up some points, but they're, they're very timely with their big plays. Yeah. And timely with their stops as well. And they were, they did, the, did the same thing against Denton Ryan last week. Struggled early. Got a couple of stops in the second half and really turned that game around. And with their offense, all they have to do is get a couple of stops mm-hmm. because their offense is efficient enough, they're going to score a lot of points. I think if you had the one guy to keep an eye on, it might be their sophomore defensive end, Prince Dorba. Yeah, he's been, he's been a stud for them all year long. So let's switch it over to the other side. That's the Dallas part of this game. Here's the Houston part, and it's Manville back in a state championship game. Believe it or not, we talk so much about Manville still searching for that elusive first state championship. You got to feel like this is their best shot yet. No doubt. You know, last year it was DeSoto in those in those shoes. They were here, always a talented team. Can they win the big game? Can they win the state title? They got it done. Now it's Manville's turn for the Houston area to to, to kind of do the same thing. Um, you know, starts quarterback Casey Martin, the University of North Texas commit, uh, pilots that offense. He's a coach's kid, but he's really talented as well. And man, he's got some weapons. He's got some weapons all over the field. Whether you're talking about Cam Scott, who's a superstar, whether you're talking about Jalen Preston, who's a superstar, Deneric Prince, the running back, the backup running back is is uh Garrison Johnson yeah, transferred in from friendship. From friendship, who's got a third guy they used to. They really rotate yes. their running backs, and they're all they can all hurt you. The offensive line's very good, and then there's the defense. And the defense, I think, because they have so many weapons offensively, goes under the radar. But Brian Johnson leads this defense that has been fantastic all year long. Yeah, Brian Johnson, in addition to being a really, really talented player, is really cerebral and smart as well. He's able to really call out the defense, and he's kind of the quarterback of that defense. Uh, think of kind of Sean Lee esque yeah. for the Dallas Cowboys, uh, appropriate here at AT&T yeah. Stadium. Him, but he's really the kind of the conductor of that Manville defense, lining guys up and getting them where they need to be. Yeah, for me, this game comes down to Highland Park containing the big play. Like they're going to hit a couple, they're going to get some yards. Okay, they're not they are not going to hold Manville under 100 yards. That is a stone cold guarantee. Yeah. They won't hold Manville under 100. Went out yards. on a limb there. But make sure you don't you keep contain off on the top. Make them check it down. Don't give up those big plays because they are going to be faster than Highland Park undoubtedly with, with all their weapons. And on the other side for Manville defensively, you got to get them off the field. Yep. If you get third and 11, you got to make sure you get them off the field because John Stephen Jones will absolutely extend the play. He'll get that. He'll, they need 11 yards. He'll get that 12. You've got to get them off the field if you're Manville. And, and so to me, those are the big keys I'm watching. Absolutely. I think that's that's you kind of hit it right on the mm-hmm. head. I think it, whichever defense can come up with a stop or two and put that pressure um, on the other opposing defense, that can it's really going to be big in this one. I think, it's, I think we're going to see a shootout, though. I think we got a great shot at it. It's 5A Division One state championship game between the Man. Manville Mavericks and the Highland Park Scots going down here at AT AT&T Stadium 7 o'clock on Friday night and so step I think on paper you lean towards Manville Highland Park cares not for what the paper says and they never never have who you going with I think Manville's got you know you mentioned earlier Highland Park doesn't beat themselves you've got to go out there and beat them yeah I think Manville has the talent to win those ma- individual matchups and beat Highland Park. I think the thing for me is that it's it's the plethora of weapons. It's not just one guy. You can't key on one guy for Manville. You've got to make sure you, you, you shut down all their weapons. Nobody's really been able to do that so far this year, and especially with a Highland Park defense that, again, Ben, don't break. Well, they'll beat you on one big play. And so for me, that's where I stand. I like Manville in this game. I think they win their first state championship. But, again, we've been very good at being very wrong about Highland Park. So do you, know, so you count them out at your own peril. So that will close out Friday. With just one more day left in the Texas one more High School day in the football. Season. I know, it's very sad. And then a long, long off season. But we're going to close it out in style with our Saturday slate. Very excited about that. We're going to preview that coming up next. So 
That's going to do it for us here at Texas Football Today. Follow us on Twitter at DCTF. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dave Campbells. Follow us on Instagram, instagram.com slash Dave Campbells. And, of course, see us at texasfootball.com, where you can find complete coverage of the 2017 Texas High School Football State Championship Games at texasfootball.com slash state. For Matt Step, I'm Greg Tepper. We'll see you later on Texas Football Today.